Good morning everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. Well, it's awful cold out here. I had to break out all my flannel shirts and uh, <laughs> the t-shirt weather is just about gone. So uh, anyway, I got my garage back. Christmas is over with. I got to, uh, if we get one more nice day, I got to take, I want to take my Harley out on one more ride and then I got to get the Honda off the lift and get the Harley back up on there so I can do my winter, my winter chores that I got to get done on that. But hey, listen, I want to talk to you for just a minute about the book of James. And uh, the book of James is one of my favorite books. And uh, there's a scripture in James 2, 14 to 20. And this is a very, very controversial uh, subject. It says, What does it profit a man, my brethren, though he say, I have faith and has not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of food, and one of you send to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled. Notwithstanding you give them not those things that they need, what does it profit? Even though faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yet yeah, many may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Thou believe there is one God, thou does well. The devils also believe and shudder. But will thou, O man, say, faith without works is dead? People, listen. The book of James barely made it into the Bible, along with the book of Jude. Those two books were the closest books that came to not being included in the Scripture. In the Council of Hippo in 393 AD and later the Reformed Council of Carthage in 397, they were considering just that. The book of James? No way. He totally contradicts Paul. Paul says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And they had a problem with what James said here. And then Jude, of course, they wanted to keep Jude out of the Bible strictly because Jude quoted Enoch. And they, they were having trouble with the Nephilim and the fact that angels came down and mated with human women. But anyway, listen. This passage right here, the one I just read, faith without works is dead. James is in no way contradicting Paul. In no way. James is affirming Paul. He's not saying anything about faith and faith alone is why you're saved. He believed that. But what he's saying is, if you have true faith, if you say you have faith and you have absolutely no works, you don't have faith. He's saying that faith will lead to works. Without works, your faith is dead. You don't have any. You're a liar. That's what he's saying. James tells us in James 1.22, he says, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. People, listen. Actions speak louder than words. If you claim you have faith in God, if you claim to be a born-again believer, what's it going to produce? Fruit. Works. It's going to produce fruit fruit. If you are truly born again, it's going to produce fruit. If you truly have faith, it's going to produce works. That's what James is saying. If you have faith, it'll be followed by works. No works, no faith. That's what he's saying. He's not saying, if you have faith, you're going to have works, and the two of them you're saved. He's not saying that. He's simply saying if you have faith, it'll be followed by works. It's that simple. Knowledge leads to actions. Knowledge leads to actions. If you believe something, you're going to act on it. Why don't you jump on a, off a building 
When you're on a building, why do you go all the way back and take the elevator down instead of just jumping off the edge? Because you believe in gravity. That's why. Your belief in gravity leads to actions. You're going to walk back and take the elevator. If you say you believe in gravity and then just jump off the edge of that building, you didn't really believe in gravity, did you? <laughs> Not hardly. James 125, he goes on to say, But whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, that man shall be blessed in all his deed. Belief leads to a quest for knowledge, and it, it leads to action. James goes on to tell us, Pure religion, James 1.27, pure religion. This is pure religion. This is how to tell you're living the truth. You believe the truth. This is how. Pure religion and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So to visit the fatherless and widows, that means to help the poor. Give money to feed the poor. Give money to clothe the poor. If you have an abundance and you, you just can care less about those people who have less than you, and you never give, you never help anybody, then what James says, your faith is worthless. If you do not help the poor, your faith is worthless. And then he goes on to say, and keeps himself unspotted from the world. Keeps himself unspotted from the world. That means fruit. That means your faith is producing fruit in your life. Helping others and giving. And maintaining fellowship with God. That means no, no known sin in your life. No hidden sins. Maintaining fellowship with God. People, according to James, that is pure faith. And James says, listen, you claim you have faith. I say that if works don't follow, your faith is no good. And that's what James is saying. James is not contradicting Paul. He's confirming what Paul says. Anyway, I just want to give you something to think about. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.